Good morning. Your process books are due tomorrow, December 15th at noon, and I am going to show you a quick tutorial on how to save, export to PDF, and upload it to your blog for me to grade tomorrow. I'm going to do this tutorial with the template that I provided you. <clears throat> So first off, I have received several questions of people in panic and they can't figure out how to unlock the text boxes or the image boxes in um, using the master pages. So part of the reason we did this in class is to give you guys time to work through some of these issues. Um, but remember that the magic key command, you want to make sure that you are on a regular page like this, not on a master page up here. If you don't see this box, you want to go up to window. Um, pages. Make sure that that's checked to bring up this palette. And yes, when I click on this, oh no, there's nothing I can do. We can't move it around. I can't unlock it. I have no idea what to do. I go to my master page. I can change it there, but what do I do on my actual page? Remember the magic key command is shift, command, click. Again, that's shift, command, click. Okay? And then you should be able to click in here and edit your text. On the image boxes, I want to remind you that you can go in here and delete this. And to insert an image, you go back to your um, selection tool and you can go to File, Place Your Image. <clears throat> I'm going to show you the example image that I just saved in my other tutorial. I can place this image right in there. Um, if you've saved it correctly using the image size templates that I gave you in this folder, one of these, it should place and be exactly to size. If you're doing it differently, um, first I've got to warn you that if you're using an image this large, you're going to be working with a huge file and it's going to be very slow and difficult to work with. So I really highly recommend that before you're plugging in your highest resolution files that you go in and you use this template, those templates that I've provided you with. Okay, so, but for the purpose of this, I'm just going to show you what this would look like. <clears throat> Okay, so the other thing I saw some people doing is leaving this box gray. Uh, I highly, highly recommend that you make it white. I just made it gray so that you see what image space you have to work with. So what you're going to do is you click on the box. You can either click over here, make sure that you're not changing the color of the stroke of the box, because that might confuse you. Make sure you're on the main part of the box. Go to swatches. Again, you could pick that up here. It's gray right now. We're going to change it to none or white, but none is probably the way to go. Okay, that looks a lot nicer, right? Um, okay, and don't forget to make sure that you go in and change this little bit of text right here. You do that by going into your master pages. And see it says first name, last name, fall 2003 process book slash B. Remember the B stands for the page number. So I'm going to take credit for Eric's work here. I typed in my name, left the rest alone. <clears throat> I go back to my page, zoom out. Shows up as a gray line. That's just because it's small. So if I zoom in again, I see that it says Sarah Zero Process Book, page five. And it does that throughout. Um, many people have asked what they need to put on their cover. Your cover can be as simple as this. You know what? Actually, do your title page first. It can be this repetitive, guys, just for the purpose of today for this assignment. I'm going to do a file, paste in place. You could do that, okay? And you can leave the inside cover blank. Um, you could do a textured photograph in the background. I would not recommend posting an image on the cover that is not something that is featured on the inside. That doesn't make a lot of sense if I wanted to learn more about that project and there's no more information about it on the inside. Um, you could do a pattern, a texture, whatever you want, a solid color on the cover. Um, these are mostly going to be used just for me to grade them this time. Your, your real portfolio and your real final process book uh, is going to be completed at the end of next semester, but I just wanted to get, give you guys some experience with, with producing one of these for the first time. Um, remember that your portfolio or your process book is like a museum to display your work. 
it doesn't have to be highly designed. Do we want the typography to be um, well set and well spaced with proper letting and, and nicely treated? Absolutely. But does it need to be anything that wows me? No, it doesn't. So make sure that you go through and double check before saving your PDF that you've gone through and changed things like the project title, the class title. Um, when it's my class, it should say Visual Communication 1. If you did it for typography, make sure it says typography. You could put the date in there if you want. You could put the instructor in there if you want. That's really up to you. Okay? Scroll through. Make sure that you do your bio page and your headshot. Again, this back cover can be blank. This could even be blank. Or you could say thanks. Or you could put your email address. You know, you want to always make sure that you do include some way for somebody to get in touch with you if, they're, if they like your work. Make it easy for them. Okay? So that's a quick review of the process book. Now we're ready to save. So first I'm going to save as for myself so that I can edit this later if I want to. I'm going to save it on the desktop. I'm going to save it as Sarah Zero Process Book. I'm going to save it as 01. I never put final because it, if you change it later, then it's final, final, or final times two, and you never know what's really real, really the final. So I always number it 01, 02, 03. Okay? Click save. That way, if you need to edit it later, you can. Um, please make sure that you save that original InDesign file so that you can come back and change it when you want to. In addition to that, then you go File, Export, Process Book 01, save it as an Adobe PDF Interactive. Okay, save. I want it to include all pages. I want them to show up as pages, not spreads. I would like to view it after I export it. Um, embed page thumbnails. Sure. View. I want it to fit the page, like I showed you in class. Uh, I want it to be two up cover page. I showed you that in class. Um, open in full screen mode. No, don't do that. That annoys people if they're not prepared for it. Um, page transitions. Uh, no, let's not mess with those. Um, maybe we can play with those another time, but they might end up being distracting for us. Forms and media. Um, we're going to leave that on the default. Create a tag PDF. I don't know what that is, so let's just leave it the way that it is. Um, let's go with JPEG. Let's try lossless and see what that does. My guess is that means it's not going to be um, pixelated, as pixelated as the lossy would be. And definitely save your resolution as 72 dpi so that it is not a huge file. Okay. Oh. Apparently I had something else open. I'm actually going to close this out. I don't want to open it in preview. I would like to open it in Acrobat. So where is it on here? Process book PDF. Open with. Always double check before you send it off to someone. Make sure that it came out the way you want it. Okay, so I actually don't have um, Acrobat on this computer. Acrobat. I don't have Acrobat on this computer, so I'll be viewing it in preview on this computer. Not a problem. I'm going to zoom out a bit. Don't worry, I will be reviewing your books on Acrobat. I'm just using a laptop that doesn't have, um, have it right now. Looks good to me. And let's double check on our file size. I'm going to hit um, Command-I to see my file size. 263 kilobytes. That's just fine. Um, anything under 4 or 5 megabytes is just fine. Um, you know, that's really even fine for email, though I don't want you guys to email these to me because if I get 45 megabyte files, that would really overload my email. Um, 263 kilobytes is, is just fine for my blog, so the next step is to open up my blog. <clears throat> I'm going to go to WordPress. My blogs. Ignore this one. And I'm going to go to my dashboard. 
posts. New post. Fall 2013 process book is what I would recommend. Add media. Upload, <clears throat> upload files. I can drag my file right in here. It says, look here, it says the maximum upload size is one gigabyte. So uh, we won't be anywhere near that, but let's not push it and try to be that big because then you're not gonna have more space on your blog left. All right, so the PDF shows up like this. Um, Sarah Zero Process Book. Again, I want to stress the importance that you include your name, at least your last name and your file name, because when I go to download these files, I don't want to have a million files on my desktop that are just named Process Book. I want to see um, Zero Process Book, Mancuso Process Book, uh, Ing Process Book. You know, I want to see your last name so that it's easy for me um, when I see the file sitting there on my desktop and I need to open it up and search for it, okay? Um, don't need a caption, don't need a uh, description, insert into post. And you see it just shows up as a link. So at this point, it's up to you if you want to go back and include some screen grabs, what you could do. You know, you could, you can go back and save screen grabs or save, um, export it as JPEGs and include screen grabs in your, um, in your, port, in your blog post. I'm not requiring that you do that. Here's, if you wanted to include a screenshot of one of your pages, um, the shortcut for a screen cut, what I, screen grab, what I just did is shift command four. Yeah. That gives you those crosshairs. I'm going to exit out of here. That saves to my desktop here, the screenshot. I could go ahead and add that if I want to. It's nice low res for me. Insert into post. So this is a test example post. I don't want to confuse you guys too much. Um, so if you wanted to show a few pages, you could. Here's the link to my process book. Let's preview that. Scroll down. And what happens when I click on that? Okay, so it opens here for me in my window, and I have the option to download it right here. I can save it to download. So here's where I preview to see, did everything come out the way I want it to? Yep, it looks like what I did before. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and publish. Now here's the critical part. I would like you to then, oops, I want you to log out, and then I want you to go to www.payfromsarahteaches. Make sure you're logged out. Oops. Hey, from Sarah Teach. Go to student blogs. Click on yours. So in this case, I'm going to click on mine. But I'm logged out, so I'm viewing it as somebody who's not me would view it. And then I go to click on my button. And there it shows up, and I can download it if I want to. That part is critical because... I want you to really make sure that you've actually posted it, you haven't just saved your post as a draft. Um, this is very important because this portfolio is worth a large part of your grade and I need to make sure that it's up. You really want to make sure that it's up and, and I can access it by noon tomorrow, okay? Um, that concludes this little tutorial. I'm going to post it on YouTube right now. And um, best of luck to you. Happy holidays and I'm excited to see you in January.